Hello, Terry Caliendo of Dedicated Managers here again, and I just want to show some updates that I've been working on. In this video, I'm going to show the date picker and its uh, action with the real-time database and how I got that all wired up through computed variables. So just to show it working, um, you simply click on the date. It pulls up the date picture picker, which this date picker, this visual thing that you're seeing, is actually inside of a Viewify menu which controls the visibility. I'll show that in a second. But you can scroll through, find your date, click on your date, and it updates and you saw it flash over there. The other thing you can do is click on a year, since this is going to be used, used for birth dates. We're going to want to be able to change the year fast. You don't want to have to scroll you know, every month to go back 30 years. So you can click on the year, scroll back the years you want to go, Say the person was born in 1952. Uh, we'll make it March 1st of 1952. And you saw when I finished up that updated over here in the database. So it's all real time. And I should be able to change it to say I got the date wrong and I was in the database for some reason. It should come back and update there. And it's um, correct in the, in the picker as well. So that's all wired up nicely. The one thing I found was difficult with this date picker was uh, if I allowed the user to manually update the date picker, if this this is in the way right now, but if, if I made it so that it showed up at the bottom, um, you would be able to, you can actually edit the set of variables so that you can edit the input line. Um, but I found the syncing all the pieces together when that was happening was quite cumbersome. And I didn't want to go down that road yet. So right now I'm just force, going to force the user to use just solely the date picker to pick a date. They won't be able to um, you know, type in their own date there. Um, so that's it working real time. Let's take a look at, um, well, let me show you where I got the code from. So if I go to Viewify, here's Viewify's page, and I click on the date pickers um, under UI components. Pickers, date picker, and I'm already on that page, so it doesn't change. Here's the picker. So this is what shows up without the menu. Uh, there's no menu system on this one, and that's why it doesn't show or hide. If you embed it within a menu, that's when you can have a um, something like this, where when you click on it, it shows up. So I grabbed the code from here. Um, where was it? There it is. There's the template. So I grabbed this code. There's three of them in there. I just grabbed the one I wanted and I threw it into my uh, development environment here. Now I like things uh, nice and small by the when I once I'm done with them, I did actually develop with it, you know, wide open. But then I like to put things all on one line because otherwise the 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 code just gets overwhelming for me. So um, I've shrunk it down. But basically it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you've got this birth date local variable. You can see it showing up everywhere that um, this thing is going to add uh, act on. And that when that's updated, I'm going to make that's a computed function that, um, where is it? So here it is, birth date local. So the getter, when it gets the, when it wants to get the birth date, local it goes into the store to the primary relative caregiver and gets that birth date I just call it local here to help myself see the difference between the two because I had a lot of problems implementing this and then when it sets it we call it dispatch to the store like I do with everything else to update the the uh, the object and, and send it the birth date um, new value in the new value just like I do in the other ones which I've talked about in other videos so um, basically, it's just the same as their code, which um, I didn't have working at first, like I said, but I, I ultimately I went down one path and, and did some workarounds, and then I came back and tried again, and I got it to work just the same as they do here, um, except with a computed function. So they're using date as a um, as a data variable that's local to the to the template. Um, but obviously we're using Vuex and storing it over to the to this database. So this doing this local here doesn't do me any good unless I put watchers on it and all that stuff. 
Um, so that's why I moved the, the date from the data section to a computed variable. So you can see that um, you know it's not in my data section here. I have the what I call the date. I change date to birth date local to be more relevant to my application, and it is within the uh, computed variable section. So it really, it but it acts the same. It works fine, um, and so you just change all the variables from the the, the sample code. And, um, and it's, it's pretty much plug and play. I even created a, um, a, a code pen that I'll put in the description that you can play with um, so you can work with it locally uh, without having to download. Or I've also made my source code available on GitHub. Um, it's available on github.com slash dedicated. That should be it. Um, so here it is right here. So you can go and download the code and play with it yourself um, just by cloning it if you know how to use Git. Or you can even just go look at the source right, uh, you know, right here, but you can't run it from, from here. So, um, but I also made this, this code pen. I'll put that link in there. I'll put both links in the description. And um, so, like I said, it took me a while to, to figure that out. But once I got it working, um, it works great in here. And so remember I talked about, I don't think I've explained this yet, that the menu, so here's the text field. That's my V text field, which is, let's see if I can get these two windows side by side. Uh, let's get rid of the files. And then I'll shrink it down here. So this line here with the calendar icon, that's just an input field, which is this V text field. And it is within a V menu. So it's actually a, um, a component that we're, uh, that we're passing to. It's actually a slot that we're passing to this component. And so when you give it the slot name of activator, that tells the V menu to, to add the click functionality so that when it's this, when this field is clicked on, um, it opens the menu. So that's what the slot activator does. And you can see I've got the prepend icon event there. So that's why that's attached to that as well. And then here's the date picker. So anything without the slot activator is going to show up within the V menu when the V menu appears. So that's the, um, the date picker itself. If I took the date picker outside, I'm going rogue here from my plan, but if I take the date picker outside, it should show up. I got to save it. There. Oops, it refreshed before I hit refresh. So that's why it's always showing up now is because it's not within the menu. And when I click on this, there's nothing in the menu to show. So the menu doesn't show. Um, so if I put the date picker back inside the menu, that's what causes it to, to show up and go away. Show up and hide is how a normal person would probably say it um, is because it's in the menu. So that's, that's that. And then the date picker itself has a bunch of options. This input ref save, this thing whole right here, that whole piece of code right there, and the return value sync, this took me hours to figure out what was going on. And I actually did another video that's not a part of this series. I did it um, to actually explain to the developers what was going on because they didn't document it. Um, so I, I sent them what I figured out. I, I delved real deep into the code and um, figured out what was going on and I sent that to them. Um, I'll put a link to that video as well. So I've got three links to put in this video if I remember correctly. Um, that, that really threw me for a loop because I didn't understand what was going on. I really didn't need to understand what was going on. All I had to do was change the, the variables, but um, whatever I was doing, I had an error somewhere and nothing was working. So it was, that's why I had to go all these different routes with the the um, creating the code pen and uh, and all that stuff, 
So anyway, pretty simple. Um, the the menu hides, you know, shows and hides the field. The, the text field is the activator, and then the date picker um, has its selections. And you can do it. There's a lot you can do with it, like creating, you know, selected dates that they can choose. If you were doing a, um, you know, a, a scheduling system where some of the dates were not available, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's really a cool, cool tool. Um, so that's all I can think of for right now. So we're already going on, uh, what are we going on, 10 and a half minutes here. So uh, we're already past the point of being incredibly boring at, at about five minutes. So um, hopefully if you found this interesting and hopefully you're find, finding all this, um, these videos interesting, I guess if you're not, you wouldn't be watching them. If you are, thank you for watching. And again, Terry Caliendo from Dedicated Managers. I'll be back with uh, another update um, on the next, uh, the next uh, changes I make.